Hi, Jim here from Droneland Australia. With me today is the DJI Agris T50. I'm gonna go through all of the flight settings on the controller with you. So let's go sit down at the desk and have a look. All right, so to get started, we're gonna come into the DJI Agris app. From this home page, if we go up to the hex nut icon over here, we can adjust some of the general settings. So unit of measurement, we have ours in metric and kilometers per hour. And then you can adjust the language and a lot of these other settings I really don't come into that much. Then to adjust the settings for the aircraft, we're going to go into begin. All the settings are really contained in this gear icon on the top right. So we'll click there. And here we have a list of settings that we can adjust. So we have aircraft settings, sprayer, controller, sensor, RTK, battery, and live view. So we're going to start an aircraft. The first thing we have here is connection, routing, and return to home speed. So I like to have mine at about 20 kilometers an hour. This is the speed that the aircraft is going to fly to the start point or fly when it's doing a return to home. Anything above 25 kilometers an hour, the obstacle avoidance sensors might not function properly because you're going too fast. So I like to keep mine about 20. And just remember that when the drone is flying to the start point, it's not doing obstacle avoidance or terrain follow. So you want to make sure that you're about the same level of your start point when you're taking off or you just fly over manually to the start point. The next one is connection routing and return to home altitude. Right now, this is set on 30. I can bring it all the way down to three. It really just depends on how hilly the environment and what the terrain is like where I'm operating. In a flat paddock, three meters usually pretty good. If you're taking off and there might be a shed nearby or something like that, maybe you want to set it to 10. So it'll go up to 10 meters and then it'll go over to the start point there. And that's also the same altitude that it's going to go up to when it does a return to home. So the next we have updates home point. So every time the aircraft lands or takes off, it'll update its home point. If you want to move the aircraft or set the home point to where your remote controller is so that it will just come back, say you're walking around a paddock while the drone's flying and you want the drone to come back to you, you could just come up to the gear icon, hit set controller location, and then initiate a return to home with the return to home button. And it'll come back to where you were standing when you hit set controller location. On tank empty, you can have it set to hover, ascend to three meters, or return to home. I like having mine set to return to home so that as soon as the tank runs out of payload, it'll automatically go ahead and come back for a battery swap and a refill. On task complete, you can set it to hover or return to home. So at the end of a spraying a paddock, when it's completed its mission, it'll automatically go ahead and start returning to home. On RC signal loss, you can have it set to hover, landing, or return to home. There are different cases where you might want different settings. So if you're operating in a location where you think you can reposition yourself, should you lose controller signal to the aircraft and get that signal back, then I might have it set to hover. Another good option is setting it to return to home, but having your return to home altitude set to about 30 meters. So if you lose signal with the controller, the drone would go up to 30 meters. I've typically seen it regain that controller signal, so that way you can take back control of the aircraft. So that's kind of a good way to do that, um, but it's, it's going to go up to 30 meters then and then start coming home. So hopefully you've regained controller signal by then, which you usually do. So I like having mindset on return to home and maybe have a connection routing altitude that's pretty high. I usually only use that in really hilly environments. In flat paddocks, uh, it's usually not a problem at all. Also, you can turn on continue task on signal loss. If the aircraft loses signal with the controller, I don't really want it to continue doing its operation. I'd rather regain that controller signal before we continue the operation. So I never have that turned on. Your spotlight can be set to auto, off, or on. We usually have ours set to auto. Then you can come into flight optimization. So on auto route spacing adjustment, we usually always keep this on, just makes things more efficient when it's planning its flight lines. Smart resume, some folks like this, some folks don't. So what it does when you have it on, say 
You've gone out, you've sprayed one tank of chemical, you come back, refilled it, it'll choose a new start point to go to. It might not be this place that it finished spraying previously. So it chooses a new start point because it's more efficient to carry that payload a shorter distance and go ahead and just start spraying another section. If you have this on at the very end, you'll have some cleanup lines to go do that the drone will automatically just go and do the cleanup. If you turn it off, it'll always go back to the point where it stops spraying. But that could mean that you're carrying a heavy payload a pretty far distance when it could go to a shorter distance and just make more efficient in flight. So displaying empty tank point, I usually always have this on. It just shows you on the controller where it's going to run out of chemical. Rectify calibration offset is only used in fruit tree mode, and that's something we'll cover in another video, but for most operations, you don't need to have this on. Next, if we go over to sprayer and spreading systems. So you can turn off or on the spraying or spreading system. If you set up a flight path and you just want to test it out without putting chemical in or anything, just come up here and turn this off, and that will allow you to fly the automated mission. If you have this on, it won't let you take off unless you have a payload in the tank. All right, so atomized spray, we always have this on because we want the centrifugal motors and the discs to be spinning. Sprinkler operating mode, the T50, since you can have four nozzles on it, has two modes for this. So alternate mode will only allow the back two or the front two sprinklers to be operating. So when you're flying manually and doing manual spray, if you start flying backwards, it'll switch the spray to the front sprinklers. If you're flying forwards, it'll spray from the back sprinklers. If you're in an automated mode with alternate mode on, then it will only use the back sprinklers. If you switch to full mode, it will use all four nozzles on the drone to do the spray if the rate's high enough. If the rate's really low, let's say like 10 liters per hectare, you're likely only going to see the back sprinklers turn on. You can also look at pump and flow rate data here, just to make sure that your pumps are operating at full capacity. Here you can hit clean hose so once you're done with the job and you're cleaning up. If there's air in the lines before you get started on an operation, you can hit start here for clear trapped air and it'll clear the trapped air. So this flow meter air alert, I like to have at about 20%. So if there's 20% variability with how it should be performing, you'll get an air alert. And here on all four of our nozzles on the T50, we have the dual discs installed. So we're gonna keep it on that setting. If you install the single layers so that you can get a larger droplet size, then you wanna just come in here and make sure you adjust this setting. So then we go into spraying system calibration. Here we can calibrate the flow meter, the reset it to factory settings, calibrate the pump, calibrate the weight sensor. And all of these operations will walk you through. It'll tell you exactly what you need to do to complete those calibrations. So that's it for our spraying system settings. Now we'll hop into the controller settings. Most people fly in stick mode of mode two. It's probably the most common. Uh, if you are sharing your aircraft with somebody else or there's other pilots operating, this is something that's good to come back and check just to make sure you're in the right mode before you take off because potentially other pilots operate in different modes. Here you can calibrate the remote controller, but you don't really need to do this often. Also here, you can get a buttons overview of what all the buttons do. A lot of these buttons are customizable. So you can change them if we just back out here. So these three, L1, L2, L3, you can adjust what this button does to your own personal preference. Same thing for the five point button. So you can press it in, up, down, left, or center, and they can all have different functions. And then the C3 button on the back of the controller can have a different function. So that's about half the settings on the DJI Agris T50. Uh, check out our next video, the link's below, and I'll be going through sensor, RTK, battery, and live view.